Good evening, this is Kara Coffey of the Ministry of Uncovering No More. I just had to tell someone that I love that in their world, because of the kind of spirituality I deal with, that we may as well just admit that I've been termed mentally ill and accept it, which isn't really true. I've worked with mentally ill people, and while perhaps I'm somebody that is hard to talk to, I also do a lot of work and have been for years, and it's just not that simple. And this political world is so complicated at this point. Um, <clears throat> I'm having to choose to just make my life as simple as possible. And I'm just know I'm going to be there for my family and for my friends. And um, that's the rest of my life. Because the politics of our country is 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 destroying us hopefully not in the next election the dnc was very encouraging um and i hope we win but we have been here before and the criminals in the republican party are real and their financial backers are real and so i'm also not going to just pretend that this doesn't exist that we're going through and here's something, this is a new um, coloring book that I've gotten. This is Mandela's to Color Volume 1. And what is special about it is it is sourced out of Austin, Texas, which this is one of the first pages. See, I started. And I'm using um, primarily with this book one. So, you know, people who like to color getting older, we seem like, honestly, those of us who fight for our democracy, but we're peacemakers. We have not. We have our homes. We appreciate our homes. We make beautiful places, even if there is a lot of combative conversation in our midst. What with all that we're going through, um, we we are good people, and we we love, and it's just frustrating where we are in this day and age. So if you want to color, I recommend this series. This is the volume one and I am just beginning, but something I, um, I'm actually uh, hesitating a bit in this one <clears throat> to um, I think I'm refusing to put magic in here, like runestones and cards and stuff. I think I just want to go back, return, return to just simply coloring. The biggest thing that I'm doing with this one is a new thing, and it's using um, ink and not using pencils. Uh, this is my first experience with these, and these are um, <clears throat> alcohol-based. I also have these duo brush pens. These are not alcohol based. So I, I've been using, and, and then I have a brand new set of, um, what's the brand on that? These are some of the, my most favorite, 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 um, even for my, my handmade books, you know, because I use some gel pen, uh, doodle, doodlers is the brand Zebra. This is Zebra brand. These are the warm colors. I got a really big pack for this particular coloring book and other artwork. So it's all sitting here in my comfortable spot in this desk my Uncle Paul and Dad made for homeschoolers and not my kids, but I. some of us, um, we have four of them and some of us um, have them now. I have one in this home, so I'm blessed with it. And I'm blessed with my parents' dresser, six drawer dresser that several of my children have also used. And um, so I have my comfort around me for the coming days. And poetry is one of those comforts. I will tell you also that just like Rudolf Steiner, and I'm trying to learn to go faster with my work, my blog work, <clears throat> that Carl Jung 
is going to be a com constant companion to help me understand what went so wrong with my Christian life that destroyed my life. As a simple housewife, homeschooling mother, I testified testified the return of the Lord, and He's around and then not, and yet I can tell you that there's a society of people that know that I'm Archangel Tara. And then I've also grown in that, but I don't talk about it too much. <clears throat> but I am seen reading my books and um, coloring, not in this particular coloring book that I just showed you. I wanted to share with you something that on the 20th of August this year, um, that I, as I'm coloring uh, a page of this, one of the first pages of it, and I'm taking my time. Know when a decision is too difficult for today. Hug ourselves, smile, and be grateful for some peace today. And I really am entering a time where I'm uh, giving up more and more to being simply a person who provides peace and comfort. Uh, my harder ministerial side, I'm learning better to keep it uh, in my places of ministry but it is almost like it doesn't exist anymore, which means my life story is complete, but the immortals that, that, like myself, that I've testified are here, are truly here. I just have seemed bigger than life and harder to deal with for quite some time because of the calling on my life. And that is, that is um, coming to a close the necessity for that. So I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful to have peace. And yet I knew that this election year was gonna cause all of us some emotional pain because of the politics stripping up. And um, I have been, in the places that I minister, I have been telling people, and I will be as good as my word, because I need people and people need me, that I'm going to be faithful. But I'm a pagan and I'm not a Christian, though I can sit and be with Christians. I have nothing against Christians. I do not like how the Republican Party is illegally using the Protestant movement. I do not like how many uh, Catholic and Protestant leaders get away with sexually molesting children and embezzling of money and stuff. There's a lot of things I don't like about the organization of church. And I'm fixing that my way, but I'm primarily a solitary pagan and becoming wicked at that. And I'm going really slow with it. Solitary pagan who is going towards being wicked. And what that really means is that I'll learn about their history, which is younger than some of the other branches of, of um, being witches, warlocks, sorcerers, sorceresses, gurus, all of that, that kind of spirituality that's not Christian. Um, and I, I never take part in the parts that are just religion, like the religion I just <laughs> destroyed me. Because I was meaningfully destroyed being who I am. And um, I've been blamed for so much. I've been hurt metaphysically, emotionally, so many times that um, it's time to be finished. And to be a little selfish, but a good kind of selfish, not the kind of selfish that doesn't make sure that my house stays clean and that I'm kind to people. So I'm not going to stop what that that part. And part of my ministry is reading philosophy, poetry, things like that to to take the edge off the pain in my life from losing so much, including an over million dollar property that my dad built both houses, and my house is going into a ruinous state because we can't afford to take care of it. It is very expensive to live these days. But the front house, the first house is well kept and the yard is being kept well, for which I'm grateful. But our legacy, 
I had most of my children, one of them in the living room spontaneously, it's not pretty. And we don't have any means by which to make it pretty. And so it sits there, but when I go in my bedroom, the aura is here too, because we are lovely people. We just don't necessarily get along with each other in our family. And I don't fault us for that. That's what I want my family and other people to know. And that is why I have hard days like today where I'm metaphysically in a, in a very difficult place and emotionally and I need to have fewer days like that now. So if my family wants to consider me mentally ill, then you go right ahead. I'm having to um, define some things right now and it's very painful to me, but it's only on one Twitter and if Twitter goes under or whatever, then, then the testimony of it will go away. In other words, it's not going on my blog. It's, it's in some of my bookmaking. So when I pass away, one of my relatives will find out. It'll be a long time, and that's even if they're interested in reading about it. That is not up to me. Tonight, I want to set my weekend on a happy note. Forget about politics, and I've got to weed my gardens this tomorrow morning. It's been getting well over 100 here in, in and around Austin, Texas, and so I need to get up early. I'm going to try to go to bed here pretty soon. I need to get up early to do my work because I'm going to have to stay in the rest of the day. And um, <clears throat> so I would like to read from The Fact of a Door Frame, Poems Selected in New, 1950 to 1984 by Adrienne Rich. And I want to read the middle-aged, which is from a section, oh, no, 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 okay. This section is from the Diamond Cutters, was, which was in 1955 written. Interesting, because my astrologist was born in 1955. He's a very nice older man who is my friend in one of my safe zones. I have uh, two, three, three safe zones for me spiritually after what happened to me. <laughs> Publicly. I almost recommitted into church life for the sake of one of my daughters, but I needed to say no to some people in some ways and just say these relationships, this, this that happened to me was exasperated by some things and I need to let those people have their happy life. I don't want to have anything to do with bitterness. I love them all deeply. I have shed many tears for what has happened and, um, <clears throat> and reading some poetry and giving back to the universe is my way of saying today, doing this actual blog article I've already done the uh, 15th of August. I've already done the, the um, some written work from it. So I'm gonna read the poem, load it up and get it up and give back to the universe because I do appreciate every person that has accepted me at least to a degree, sometimes. The middle-aged. Their faces, safe as an interior of holland tiles and oriental carpet, where the fruit bowl, always filled, stood in a light of placid afternoon. Their voices measure, their figures moving in the Sunday garden to lay the tea outdoors or trim the borders. Afflicted, haunted us. For to be young, was always to live in other people's houses, whose peace, if we sought it, had been made by others, was ours at second hand, and not for long. And I have lived there my whole life. 
secondhand piece. I'm pretty much ignored now. Labeled. Yeah, I am. The custom of the house, not ours. The sun fading the silver blue for tuny curtains. The reminiscence of a Christmas party of 14 years ago. All memory. Signs of possession and of being possessed. We tasted tense with envy. They were so kind, would have given us anything. The bowl of fruit was filled for us. There was a room upstairs we must call ours, but 20 years of living they could not give. Nor did they ever speak of the coarse stain on that polished balustrade, the crack in the study window, or the letters locked in a drawer and the key destroyed. All to be understood by us, returning, late in our own time, how that peace was made, upon what terms, with how much left unsaid. And other than one pinned section on one of my three Twitter, what is left unsaid in my middle age is a book where I am settling my affairs yet again. And I think I'm going to be alone for a very long time yet enjoying people where they have decided that it's okay to enjoy me. The loss is very real, but so is the triumph that my testimony is true. So I need to live in the triumph. Smile every day and put one foot in front of the other as I walk about and do my life. I think a dream rich is going to help me with that. This is Kara Coffey of the Ministry of Uncovering No More.